Oh, holy I gave you fair warning, beware, beware. Smack him in the mouth, mouth. I gave you fair warning, beware, beware. Smack him in the mouth. I gave you fair warning, beware, beware. Smack him in the mouth, mouth. I gave you fair warning, beware, beware. Smack him in the mouth, mouth. What is up, Warzone Sports? Army. Well, those of you that are already subscribed and a part of the army, if you're not, please help me out with the subscription button, the little notification bell, and the like to help us out a ton in the algorithm real quick before we do anything else. Today, we're going to be hopping into the film of Jerry Judy. We did Justin Herbert last week. Jerry Judy won the voting this week. If you guys want to vote for who we should cover next week, please drop down in the comment section below real quick and leave a name of any NFL athlete you'd like to see studied in the film room next week it can be defense it can be offense it can be basically anything except for kicker and punter but anyone else just let me know in the comment section below and they will be featured next week you can go back to last week's comment section you'll see the jerry judy comments we're really gonna dive into what jerry judy is good at and what i got from my film study and we're also going to take a look at what he needs to improve on he was a rookie wide receiver last year he's going into his sophomore year this year what do we want to see him really focus on this offseason, improve on to take his game to the next level, have that 1,000-yard receiving season in his second year? Compiled together a couple clips that I've found from Jerry Judy's offseason so far, just a little bit of an update on his abilities and his route running as a whole. And then we're also going to take a look at his amazing 8-catch, 140-yard, one-touchdown performance against the Las Vegas Raiders in Week 17 of last year. And really paint a whole picture. What does Jerry Duty excel at? What does he need to work on going into 2021 to improve his game? And even though I'm a Chargers fan, I can admire beauty in the sport of football. And without further ado, let's get into the film study of Broncos wide receiver Jerry Judy. All right, we're going to start off with some footwork drills, some clips that I found of Jerry Judy from this offseason. There's a couple things in here that really stand out to me. First things first, his shoulders very rarely lower and raised throughout the drills, as you can tell. He kind of has level playing field with his shoulders. And then as you see, there's no false steps in his cuts. They're quick, they're aggressive, but they're smooth and in one motion. That's the key here with Jerry Judy. Look at that, man. And just cuts up field. Notice also, especially in this one, watch his head movement. His head snaps around before the rest of his body. And wherever your head goes, the rest of your body has to follow. So he's very disciplined at getting his head snapped around the direction he wants to go, which causes his entire body to move around just as fast as he snaps his head. Watch very closely. Bang. Bang. Gets the head around. Boom. It almost doesn't look real. I'm super jealous he's a Bronco. Then my buddy sent me these clips and told me not to watch them until I was live on the air. He's a Broncos fan. And while we're not doing this live, we are doing it pre-recorded. I was able to not watch these clips. So I'm actually going to get a natural first reaction here for you guys. Um, let's see what Jerry Judy does. I have no idea who the defensive back is. If anyone knows who the defensive back is in this clip, if he's a Bronco, if he's another defensive back, if he's a college guy, a high school guy, I have no idea who he is. We're not looking at him anyways. We're looking at what Jerry Judy does. So let's see what this first route is. Um, I'm assuming it's impressive, otherwise my buddy wouldn't have sent it to me for this video. Oh, holy shit. That's just nasty. That's just nasty right there. Excuse my language, but as a defensive back, how are you supposed to guard this? The first break, one movement, just right inside here. So now the DB is committed to going inside and chasing Judy like this, and the ability to completely stop and flip a 180 the other direction in one smooth, quick, and like I said, aggressive movement is almost unfair. No one's going to guard this if they're playing man coverage and he runs this route. I don't know if this route is in the playbook, but super clean stuff by Judy here. Very impressive. Look at him. He's on skates. All right, here's the second clip I was sent. Both of these are from the same day. I think it's a slow-mo. It looks like a corner route. Just breaks off the DB completely. When the DB gives you this much space, it's not as difficult to execute what is called a stem at the beginning of your route, which is what Judy's going to do here. Basically, he's leading that DB inside, making the DB lean inside on him to guard him, and then quickly and aggressively breaking it to the corner at the top of the route, and even has a little bit of a stab towards the post, almost like a little head fake towards the post. I wouldn't completely call this a post corner because it really just is his break. 
but he sells it so well it almost looks like a post corner. Um, we'll watch it in slow-mo one more time. I'll show you what the stem is. You can see he's already leaning inside here before I even push the play button. See how he leans inside? He just kind of runs this up the inside of the numbers versus outside, so he gives himself some more space to break to at the corner. Uh, perfectly ran route by Judy. I have no idea who this DB is once again, but there's, he cannot keep up with Judy. That first route was pretty unguardable. I mean, right here in this position, regardless of if it's a post or if it's a corner, it does not matter. This DB is completely toast. It just happens to be the corner. And it just makes him look worse because he keeps running thinking that it's a post. He's not even in the frame right now. All right, here we're going to see Jerry Judy running her out versus fellow rookie cornerback A.J. Terrell, one of the better rookie cornerbacks out of last year's draft class. And Judy really perfectly executes what we call the uh, hook or curl or hitch route here. It's a little bit of a deeper hitch. I'm going to play it to show the route first, and then I'll break it down. Bam, nice release off the line, kind of untouched, just stops on a dime. Catch, and then gets upfield. So first off, Judy comes off the line hard and aggressive and sells fade here. Right here, the, the DB is looking at Judy and legitimately thinking that Judy is trying to burn him over the top. And that is the mission off the line when you're running a stop route, a hitch route, a comeback route. Any of those routes that are going to come breaking back towards the quarterback, you want to really get that DB to commit to the fade. And as you see, Terrell here opens up his hip and almost gets to a full speed sprint alongside Judy before Judy cuts off this route. And then Judy's footwork and ability to just completely stop on a dime like this also helps a little bit. Terrell just keeps running and Judy is wide open. I mean, in man-on-man -man coverage, this is pretty unguardable without holding the receiver or just flat out committing a pass interference penalty by tackling him when he stops on a dime like that. But what's really going to separate Judy as he progresses and as he develops in the NFL is what he displays after he catches the ball. Immediately, you know, pop into his mind that he's on the five-yard line. You got to score on this play. There's just too much space not to score on this play. You got a DB out there. He's the only guy that can tackle you. He created a ton of space with his route running ability. As you see, it's almost a five-yard gap between him and the DB. Now time, after you catch the ball, finish this playoff and make sure that this is six points on the board. He does exactly that by cutting up field uh, towards the inside where there was a little bit more space and towards the sideline. Good decision by Judy here. And an overall, just a great play made by him here. Here's another clip that I found from their matchup with the Raiders earlier on in the season. Trayvon Mullen's going to be on the coverage here against Judy. And Judy's going to uh, show his footwork once again in his route running. That throw by Locke. This is the kind of stuff that you like to see from your young rookie wide receivers. Off the line here, he has a good release initially. And when Mullen realizes that he's beat... He immediately grabs Judy's face mask. And instead of complaining, throwing his hands up, and giving up on the play, he fights through this face mask and stays alive in this play. Look at how when Mullen's hands get on the face mask, he is just like, get off of me. I got a route to run. We'll worry about the flag later. He did not get the flag on this play, by the way. It was a very clear face mask. His route here is another one of those stop routes, but he realizes his quarterback's in trouble and gets to the sideline to try and help him out. He's got Mullen on skates right here. Look at him. Ooh, where are you going? <laughs> All right, let's get into the game tape. We got week 17 pulled up here. Broncos versus Raiders in Denver. Jerry Judy had eight catches for 140 yards and a touchdown to close the season off. Very impressive. Very good game for him here. So I figured it was a good one to grab up and break down. Here on this first play, I wanted to show off how great Judy is and how he's elite already at this level at those in-breaking routes. We see guys like Keenan Allen. We see guys like Michael Thomas use and abuse the in-breaking routes at all levels, deep down the field and even just in the short to intermediate range with just slants and digs and everything that you can think of going towards the inside of the field. And, and Judy does it very well here on this play. Once again, very good off the line, pushes up field, sells fade. You see the little stutter step, but the DB wasn't really pressing too hard. And then on a dime, he's able to just change direction, stop his entire movement, and break towards the inside of the field. And most DBs aren't able to keep up with this. And I think that's Mullen once again gets put on skates once again. And then he makes a really good low catch uh, to finish this playoff. Receiving coaches will a lot of times preach and preach and preach and preach how on these dig routes you want to try and get to as close to 90 degree break as you possibly can. I don't think it gets much more 90 degrees than Jerry Judy displays right here at the top of this route. Very impressive. I wanted to show this playoff just really quick because it's something really small that I noticed when watching the film from this game and watching more film of Jerry Judy throughout the course of the entire season. 
It's just something that the elite and the better wide receivers do that separates them from other wide receivers in the NFL. When the play is designed completely opposite of you and you're nothing but a decoy, why not work on some new releases? Why not try out some new things? Why not give that defensive back across from you a completely different look than he's seen the entire game? You're going to see that up top here. Jerry Judy runs some weird release where he cuts inside, runs upfield, and he would have burnt the DB if the play was designed to go to him here. Almost could have maybe forced a holding penalty if the referee was really being finicky about it, but it was just completely opposite of the play. There was no plan of Drew Locke ever even looking his way, um, but he would have toasted the DB here, you know, minus the holding. Jerry Judy led the NFL with targets that were uncatchable with a total of 26, and a very high 24% of his overall total targets thrown to him were uncatchable whether it was drew lock or whether it was the other broncos quarterbacks that were in charge and at the helm of the broncos this season drew lock was a lot of the problems and drew lock also hindered jerry judy's just straight stat line i mean if he catches half of those uncatchable targets instead of them just sailing over his head or being thrown into the dirt i mean we're looking at him having around 65 to 70 receptions around 1100 yards versus his 850 that he put up in his rookie year, I mean, we're looking at him putting up something similar to what Justin Jefferson did, not quite at that level, but he definitely would be the number two wide receiver stats-wise for his draft class last year, had these 26 uncatchable passes, even had half of them be catchable, and of course, he came down with the catch. Here's a good example as to, I don't know what the hell the quarterback is doing. Jerry Judy's in the slot here. Drew Locke gets on the move, and right here, Jerry Judy is very clearly about to be wide the heck open. Jerry Judy ran what looked like to be a seam that he kind of just adjusted and saw where the hole in the zone is and very beautifully found the hole in the zone. And Drew Locke right here has to see this and has to recognize this. He's rolling out. He only has two receivers to look at in the first place, Jerry Judy and whoever it is above him on the screen. And Drew Locke kind of just throws this pass away. Jerry Judy's wide open for a touchdown here on this play. I'm just not sure why, right here in this moment, Locke doesn't have too much pressure in his face. Judy has about 10 yards of space to work with uh, from the nearest defensive back. Why isn't Locke letting this ball go immediately to Jerry Judy right here on the sideline? And I'm willing to bet it turns into a touchdown. There's only one guy to make the tackle, and he's guarding a completely different receiver down the field. And this isn't a Drew Locke film study, but I really want to reiterate the fact that Jerry Judy was much better than his stat line suggests. And his stat line suggests something very impressive, being a rookie wide receiver, losing Cortland Sutton so early on in the season, and having the pressure of becoming the number one receiver like that first day on the job as a rookie. But Drew Locke did not help this at all. I mean, on this play right here, just a bad read. Jerry Judy is wide open for an easy completion. He tries to force it into traffic instead. And the guy he was targeting was nowhere near open, but you see how open Jerry Judy is. Uh, just, just a poor decision here by Locke. And it's not like he's facing a ton of pressure there in the pocket either. He's got a clean pocket. And then this isn't to Jerry Judy, but Locke just completely sails this pass to no one in the corner of the end zone. And here's another one. All these were taken from the same game. Drew Locke just completely sailing that pass. Locke just really lacks the anticipation and timing ability to really mesh and build a chemistry with a receiver like Jerry Judy who all of his routes depend on anticipation and timing. That's why for this upcoming season, if Locke's going to be the long-term starter, I actually think Sutton may have a little bit more upside just because Sutton fits the style of Drew Locke a little bit better than Jerry Judy. And when I say he fits the style of Drew Locke a little better than Jerry Judy, I mean he fits the style of a quarterback that isn't very good better than Jerry Judy. I mean, if you give Jerry Judy a guy like Aaron Rodgers or a guy like Russell Wilson or a guy like Tom Brady who really has mastered the anticipation and timing part of this, Jerry Judy would be absolutely deadly. Jerry Judy would put up 1,200, 1,400-yard season with 10 touchdowns. Jerry Judy would probably be a top 10 receiver in the league if he was on a team with a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers or Russell Wilson. Shoot, even give this guy like a Kirk Cousins or a Derek Carr or any of these guys are just a little bit better at these timing routes or just a little bit better at the quarterback position in general. I'm trying not to hate on Drew Locke too much here. All right, back to Jerry Judy here. Enough of my Locke hate fest. I saw this play and I picked it out for you guys because Jerry Judy runs a very different route here and a, and a route with a different goal. All those other routes are meant to beat the man coverage, beat the guy across from him. This one is designed to be a zone coverage and Jerry Judy 
demonstrates the understanding of the difference between the two here on this play right here. He's going to be running a deep crosser through the zones, and he finds a hole in the zone and kind of just softly starts to slow down in it, gives his quarterback a target, and recepts the ball as it comes to him. You can see it a little bit better from this angle, how Jerry Judy kind of slows down into the hole in the zone, stands there, makes a very good catch in traffic. See right here, he realizes that he is right in the pocket that he needs to be in for this route. This is not 20 breaks in the route. It's nothing like that. It's just a plain cross over the top of the field, look for the hole in the zone, sit in it, and make the catch. That easy. Bam. Good job, Jerry Judy. All right, this play is kind of the holy grail of all of Jerry Judy's routes in this game and really one of his better plays of the entire season. And guess what? It's another in-breaking route, but this one has a few more landmarks that he has to reach for the overall development of the play. Off the line, he has to get inside of that corner there. And the reason that is is because that underneath route right next to him is stopping right there in the corner zone. He has to get inside the corner, threaten the corner up the field to open up that underneath route. That's just a landmark of his on this route. And then after that, he presses up field however many yards the route design is. He, he cuts it off right at the 25, you're going to see here. Breaks in, and this is more of a rounded route, but it did not need to be a super clean for a DB once you get the ball in your hands. That can be your path to the end zone. And Jerry Judy showed that off here on this play. We're going to see it from this angle here. I want you to look at Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy does not have 4-3 burner speed by any means. But when he gets that six foot one stride open and he gets going, this man can move up the sideline. And he knows the sideline is his BFFL forever. Generally, there's a lot less that can go wrong when you're running up the sideline versus trying to go across the middle of the field where there's a lot of people trying to take your head off. All right, now we're going to address the elephant in the room and what he struggles with, and the biggest thing, obviously, is drops. I even made a TikTok about it. And it And with all jokes aside, and because I'm a big fan of his, we're going to give him the, the benefit of the doubt a little bit. It was his rookie year. There was a little bit of nerves. And Fantasy Flojo, fellow member of the Warzone Sports Network, pointed out to me that he does struggle at going up and getting passes. So passes above his head. He's almost a little bit scared to open up the rib cage and take hits on inside of here. Or even just take the chance at it. Take the chance at taking a hit right there. But my thing is, is when you're in traffic like that and you're trying to make a tough catch, you're going to take the hit anyways. You're going to get smacked anyways. You might as well catch the ball. And you see right there, the first one displays it. A lot of these happen in the same game as well. So that makes me think that might be a little bit of a mental thing. Once he starts getting to his own head after he drops one, it kind of just starts piling on and piling on and piling on. I will say this. He has a four minute long drop compilation on YouTube right now. That is not a good look for an NFL receiver to have a four minute long drop compilation. That's usually your highlight reel. Um, but here are some of his drops. As you see, there is a theme with it. He does tend to drop more passes. When the pass is above the waist level and especially above the shoulder level, this one's kind of unexcusable. Yes, it's in traffic, but it just goes right through his hands and he just flat out drops it like i said it could be a mentality thing it could be a rookie wide receiver thing that he could overcome as soon as his second year in the nfl overall jerry judy is already a footwork and route running master and while i don't know about this tweet where he says he's gonna go for 2,000 yards this season he didn't say 2,000 yards we'll give him that he just said 2,000 we're kind of inferring the rest of it but i will say this whether that 2,000 is his goal of 2,000 yards this year or the year that he was born, when he does have a more technical quarterback in the game, I think that Jerry Judy is actually gonna overtake the Broncos wide receiver one spot in years to come, if not this season, if we see a lot of Teddy Bridgewater somehow out there on the field. He's having a good quarterback and fixing a drop problem away from being a top 20, I'm, I'm, I'm very confident to say top 20, possibly top 10 level wide receiver in the league. Very impressed by what I saw from Jerry Judy today on film. Thanks for tuning in, but before you go, please drop down in the comment section which player you want to see next. Jerry Judy won last week with one vote. So if you guys want to drop down there and vote for a, any player in the NFL that you want to see featured in the film room next week, please do. It'll help me out a ton in making that decision. Also, once again, help us on our road to 2,000 subscribers. We just passed 1,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for that. By hitting that subscription button, turn on the little notification bell so that way you're alerted anytime we drop a video or go live. We're doing one every single day of the week 
24 seven at this point. You don't wanna miss any of that. So make sure you hit that little notification bell and then smash the like button. Cause that helps us out so much in the algorithm. And that is really what made the video go last week. So please hit that like button again this week. I would really appreciate it. If you guys are interested in getting some Warzone merch, like the merch that I'm sporting right now, got the Sports Force, another show, another weekly show on the Warzone Sports Network that airs every Wednesday night. Head to www.warzonesportsnetwork.com. We got merch for all the shows up there on the website, and you can also just get some general Warzone stuff if you like it. If you're craving more film study, I put last week's episode in the description below and in the end screen. I think that's all the cheap plugs for this week's episode. Thank you guys one more time for tuning in. I'm Mike, and I am on the mic, and I'm just a former decent high school player turned fan. And this is me saying, until next time. It's Phil Flames, I'm with Mike on the mic. Yep. What's up, the brand new one time for one your time. mind? He gave you fair warning. Now it's time to smack him in the mouth with that raw sports talk from the town. Sweet chin music to your favorite sportscaster. Mike on the mic with sports talk that matters. Reppin' for the West, see the palms in the logo. Mike on the mic, sports pod, let's go!